Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to cover focal points. To give you some background, remember this game, Battle of the Sexes, it had two pure strategy in Ash Equilibria, one where they both went to the ballet and one where they both went to the fight. And then there's this other game that's very simple, it's called Pure Coordination, which is the same general idea as Battle of the Sexes, except here there is no advantage for one player if they go to one choice over the other. So before, you know, ballet was worth two points for player two and one point for player one, and uh, fight was worth two points for player one and one point for player two, but now everything is just worth one. So all they care about is coordinating, hence it's pure coordination. This game, unsurprisingly, has two pure strategy Nash equilibria as well, up left and down right. So there's a natural question here. In coordination games such as these, how do players select a pure strategy Nash equilibrium and avoid the bad outcomes, given that there are multiple pure strategy Nash equilibria? So in this game, again, Battle of the Sexes, there were two, ballet, ballet, and fight, fight, and pure coordination. There were, again, two, up left and down right. How do they select one of those equilibria and get the coordination payoffs, these good payoffs, and avoid these bad outcomes where you get zero uh, for both players? And one possible solution to that is something called focal points. And what is a focal point? Well, it's a particular pure strategy Nash equilibrium that players select due to the salience of that choice. So this isn't a formal definition. There is no formal definition. Focal points by definition are informal. They're informal appeals to your intuition about which pure strategy Nash equilibrium that you should select. And to give you some examples of this, I want you to go over a few problems and see what you think you would select in these games and see if we can coordinate our strategies and, and get our good payoffs out of that. So here's the first problem. I want you to pick a square, 36 squares on your screen. Just select one. And if we both select the same square, we win $20. So if you're watching this on YouTube, go to the comments section and write problem one and then select a square using the letters and numbers provided. And once you've done that, we'll go to problem two. Now I want you to pick any whole number greater than zero. And if we both select the same number, we will win X dollars, where X is the number that we picked. So again, just go to comments and put problem two and then put your number down for how much you want to make. Okay, problem three, I need you to pick any day of the year. And again, if we select the same day, we'll win $20. So go to the comments, write some day of the year. Don't actually put the day, uh, the year rather, but put the month and the day, no year. Okay, now for problem four, I want you to pick heads or tails. And if we both select the same choice, we won $20. So just write heads or tails for problem four. All right, let's get to my answers and see if we've coordinated our strategies here. So for problem one, I told you to pick a square. There are 36 pure strategy Nash equilibria to this game, one for every individual square. However, my answer was A6. And why is that my answer? Well, all of these squares are either blue, purple, or green, except for one. There's only one that's red, A6. So it kind of stands out, it, it sticks out, and so maybe you want to select that one because it seems like an obvious choice just because it is red and everything else isn't. So that's why I selected A6. Now pick any whole number greater than zero. Well, I chose $1 million as my answer, so the reason for that is that it's a big number and it's a round number, so I would want to win a lot of money if I played this game, so I wouldn't want to just write one dollar. And given that I want to win a lot of money, it makes sense to write a flashy number and a whole number, so I wrote a million dollars. You can see why selecting like a million and one would not be as good, because you know who's going to write one million dollars and one when they could just write a million? Even though one million and one is worth more theoretically, this just seems like a more intuitive selection, which is why I picked that. Again, maybe your answer varied. I don't know. I'll have to check the comments on that. All right, so problem three, pick any day of the year. I chose January 1st just because it was the first day of the year, and that seemed like the obvious choice. If me and you were trying to select the same date, why not just select the first one? So that's why I chose January 1st. Now for the last problem, pick heads or tails. I chose heads for the same reason as before. It's the first choice. So. Why would I choose a second choice when I could choose the first choice? Well, in my opinion, I wouldn't. I would just choose heads, so that's why I chose heads. I was thinking maybe you would be thinking the same thing, but again, we'll see when we get to the comments and actually figure out how much of these things we've coordinated and how much we haven't, and I look forward to doing that. 